I Wanna Jump Like Dee Dee with me, Giles Sibold, is the music podcast that does music a bit differently. I'm talking to some incredible musicians, DJs and producers about how they use an experimental mindset to fuel their own creativity, pursue new challenges, overcome fears, bounce back from mistakes. <laughs> Lars hates me. She'll be like, doing it like if I'm doing a photo shoot, I'll be like, you'll be she'll like just pissing like, about stop laughing. And I'm like, I feel funny though. It's fun. Like, <laughs> she's like, here she goes. She gonna start here like, she goes. Okay, so there's there's tons of good stuff going on in, in Austin, Texas. And my guest today is really one of the leaders of that scene. She's making some, you know, kind of like incredibly dynamic and progressive music with her band Pleasure Venom. And hopefully as you've been picking up from previous episodes, I'm really not into genre-fying music, if that's a word. Uh, I think I think it's kind of lazy, I think it's unhealthy. And Pleasure Venom for me certainly really do define genres. So big kind of tick there. So Pleasure Venom's music, if you haven't heard it, it's it's honest, raw, it's really beautiful, and it's about really immersing the listeners into their experiences. And the latest single is called Fascist, and it will literally make your face burn. So I'm really excited to hear about how she uses experimentation to break new ground, collaborate, overcome fears, and basically kind of reduce the give a fuckometer to zero because I have a feeling that I can kind of learn a thing or two. So massive welcome to Audrey Campbell of Pleasure Venom. Audrey, welcome. Hello, hello. Hi. Nice to see you. So, you. so last time we saw each other, I think it was 2019 when you were, when you came to the UK. And obviously that's been, since then, has been on many levels pretty tumultuous, hasn't it? I was literally thinking about that like god that was 2019 we were in the uk and that's when yeah. i first met you like in person yeah yeah i know i know so you're friends with our band manager lars and yeah was like no this guy's really cool and blah, blah, blah. it was great seeing you and like i don't know we had so much fun and it was great it was in london right yeah yeah oh we, we I, I i came down i met you at um when you landed at heathrow and then pretty much you were then oh, kind yeah. of into I into you bus, and then when you were off yeah <laughs> I was so fried when we landed so my thing is that I have such a hard time fucking sleeping on tours it's really yeah. bad and it's something that so last year 2020 is going to be ironically mm. focusing on touring for pleasure venom yeah you know like and down all, the toilet you know what sort I mean? of goes yeah um but I was like gonna work on that because I'm like I always kind of feel a little fried at tours it's just mainly sleeping on planes or in vans yeah upright it's not my I don't know I just I'm really bad at sleeping and travel but you have to yeah. so I'm always kind of fried and that was like the longest that we'd ever what was that like a 10 hour flight or something like that yeah and yeah I probably slept maybe three of it I just ended up watching movies and I was mad because my drummer Thomas was sitting next to me and he's sleeping like a fucking baby and I'm like <laughs> oh like god dang I can't stand you right I'm, now. I'm exactly like that I cannot sleep on planes I and it's like when somebody's sat next to me and they're just zonked I'm like oh my god how do you do that oh god, I'm jealous because I'm like I want to freaking sleep I know I need to but I don't know that was pretty much so yeah I do remember meeting you at Heathrow for a minute and then yeah. we were just like on in like a then you you had yeah, to we're in a rental and then we we're driving to manchester and i think i kind of crashed out because i i just had to crash because yeah. we had a set that same night yeah oh, god, that was really crazy to think about oh my god <laughs> this is a long time ago god i miss tours they were so fun though <laughs> well yeah like, like we were saying earlier i mean it's it, it i mean kind of signs that things might be coming back but mm -hmm. i don't know i mean you've got you've, you you know like you said you know kind of like with with, with your music it's kind of up there you know it's about kind of crowd sort of participation and who knows what you know kind of like what you're going to feel and what the you know what the crowd are going to what the punters are going to feel as well about going back yeah. and getting into I that feel like a lot of our music is just like kind of like getting in the pit and just there's a lot of fluids and stuff yeah. flying around and yeah. i like it and i like that i want to keep like that punk rock yeah to me that's just like the most punk shit is just like get in there with your people it's like it's not just me on stage performing. It's like all of us. It's like a cathartic thing between yeah. the audience and myself. So it's not something that I really look forward to. They're opening up like shows in Austin where I think it's like people sitting in like they rent booths or whatever. 
that's not really how our shows mm. get down. Like I would feel really weird performing and like people are just staying in their booths. That's mm. weird to me. Like I can't fucking do that. I feel like that works for certain genres, but like yeah. I, I don't know if I would get anything from like a show like that. Like I do miss live music. I miss, but I don't want to change like what the way that we do shit, like mm. our model of the way that we do. And I mean, it's the way that I've trained to perform. Like I've been yeah. playing music for a minute, but I'm like, a lot of it does for me. I get a lot more off of like the crowd interaction. And if there's none, I don't really see myself doing that or having mm. a great time doing that. Like we did a live at Wolfshield session over the summer. That was yeah. fucking fun to put out and do. Yeah. We were just playing outside of like Lars's place. It was cool. Yeah. It was great seeing the band because we hadn't practiced and seen each other at all. It was freaking great. And we just missed, I was like, dude, I miss just loud music in my face so bad. <laughs> <laughs> so it was great to do that. And so we shot that last summer and it was yeah. just like our engineer and Lars and Taz were over there. But it was just kind of like we finished the song and it's just like, okay, I guess we'll do the next one. I imagine it's going to be something like yeah, that. And I'm like, I know. it was fun to do and it's great to just put out something, but it was just kind of like, I don't really get that much out of yeah. those kind of shows. And that's what I feel like the shows that are available right now in Austin are kind of like, and it's mm. not, I, I kind of want, it's, it's been one of those things where I kind of just want to wait until I'll know when the right time for us to come back, yeah, you know, yeah. like, and I'm, it's just kind of like wait and see kind of thing. I mean, I guess if you, I mean, if you'd, you know, it kind of puts it into real sort of perspective, the, the kind of value and the energy that the audience, the crowd gives you. Mm -hmm. you know you know if compared to you know a kind of pre-covid show which is like you say when everybody you, you're in everybody's face is there in your face and it's yeah it's about that kind of like human experience isn't it and then when that's taken away it's like okay yeah they're actually the, it's a really big part of what we do yeah i've had a lot of time to think about that too where it's just like yeah. we've been getting offered shows since i want to say about august last year mm. there's a cool there's a few cool venues and I know that they're trying to practice as safely as possible. Mm. Um, I have heard some of the shows have gotten a little, but I don't know. Like, I do like these venues that have been putting on shows here. They they mainly, they didn't have to, again, it's more like a lot of, it's like they didn't have to change their model. They already were doing shows outside. Yeah. Patio, Got you. you know, bar, yeah. where it's just like big ass backyard, you know, like you can just play outside of the venue. Yeah. Outside. So I know that those probably could be safe, but again, it's just like people are forced to sit at their tables. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know how I feel playing a set like that. Like, I don't really like that shit. Like, I don't know. I want to, I, I want to go back to live music the way that I understand it, you know, yeah, like, yeah. Me, that would just feel very strange. Well, um, hey, well the, I mean, the, you know, the, the, the time that I saw you in London, at, at, at the, the new cross, uh, <laughs> Yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying to imagine that sort of played in front of a of a crowd that sort of sat at, you know, kind of two around a table, Static, sort yeah. of like one two meters apart. Uh, yeah, kind of. No, I think I was like jumping on tables and shit. You were, like, yeah, you were jumping on their tables. Whatever the hell I want to do, <laughs> I don't think a lot about what I'm going to do whenever like I'm on stage. It's it is a lot more like uh, what, what do you call it? Um, a lot of the front men and front women, front people that I like. Mm. are very spontaneous and yeah that's the kind of performers I like where I'm like I don't know what they're gonna do you yeah. know and with that I try to enter into the same mindset whenever I'm about to go on stage I just try and clear my head and just like mm. I might go have a smoke and a shot you know yeah. <laughs> just kind of like <laughs> you know and I might leave I remember I used to leave whatever band that was playing before us I probably would leave maybe about 20 30 to go sit outside and chill by myself yeah and yeah a lot of times sometimes that could be a lot, you know, especially doing local shows. Like I have a lot of friends here and stuff. Like they'll come up and like kind of chat me up a lot, but I kind of need some time on my own. A time little on bit. your own. Yeah. yeah. And like then get on stage and kind of do my thing. But it's just like, it's not a lot of thought. It's a lot more catharsis and like mm. immediacy, uh, spontaneity kind of stuff that happens whenever I'm doing a set. Yeah. And it's fun. Mm. And I think it's fun for the audience. And I think that's what people like me enjoy from mm. like, if all I'm gonna do is just like hold this microphone and sing, like give him a show. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I try not to think too much about like what I'm gonna do. Cause it's like, I don't know if I'm gonna jump up, but at that, I wanna be on stage and have that fucking available. If I wanna jump on that fucking table or on that bar, I wanna be able yeah. to do that. 
And yeah. with all these restrictions, like I've done a few interviews where they're like, you can't fucking cuss. I'm like, oh, I don't know what to do with these fucking restrictions under COVID, dog. Like, <laughs> it's not my, I don't know. I, I feel like I, I'm trying to navigate this until I finally hard push that like, no, I'm not going to change who the fuck I am. And like the way yeah. that I like to do things and the way that I enjoy to express my art. Yeah. And it was hard, hard because I'm like, some of these shows were offering a lot of money and I'm like, oh, whatever. <laughs> Like, the, the integrity like, sort of shines through <laughs> and like i mean we lost a lot of money you know yeah. losing so it was at the top of uh, uh what is it south by that south was a big yeah. deal yeah that was crazy to like watch and we did like a south by oh shit i forgot the name it was a great name south by south like not or something it was a set <laughs> before and everyone was starting to cancel but we we're like no we're gonna fucking do it it's not gonna be that bad like all the misinformation mm. we were like mm. no like we just need to like stay strong or whatever so we did a set like the week before we went to the austin music awards mm. played a set right afterwards wow and it was great because that award show was weird uh anyway <laughs> i'd never <laughs> been to one. it was weird anyway <laughs> well they did this whole thing i i kind of wrote them about it they didn't get back to me but they did this thing where they like announced <laughs> they told all the winners that they won and didn't tell any of the nominees. I'm like, we would still came and like got our free drinks and shit. It's just weird. I was just like, everyone's dressed and I'm talking to these dope ass musicians that are just like me. Like we look cute tonight. And <laughs> like, we aren't, there's not even a chance that we're gonna go on stage. And it's just like fucking weird. And it's just like, no, we're not bitter cause we lost. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I know how I feel about my band in Austin, Texas. The fucking, <laughs> fucking good. <laughs> fucking all right I'll, i'm not gonna go there but i feel like we're really fuck i don't need an award to tell me how dope my band is okay yeah, yeah and yeah. i do like all the people we were nominated with it wasn't like that but i feel like that kind of shit breeds that kind of like mm. animosity and i was like this is really toxic if you just would have told everybody that you mm -hmm. know you're gonna do that and then it's just weird and they had like pretty much all the winners on stage like ready to perform so it's like everyone knew and it's like why are we here but we would have came anyway. It was just weird. I'm really glad that we booked the set right afterwards. Yeah, okay? yeah. So it was like, we just went and danced the night away. It was like the last time that I saw my friends too. Cause wow. a week later we lost all of our gigs. We had to bail on all of them or they got canceled. Uh, lost a lot of money and we had shows booked until like June. So all mm. those shows are gone too. I want to say we lost about maybe three to five grand. It was a lot wow. of money that That's we were going to use to go on tour. Yeah and because that was the plan <laughs> wow yeah but it was just yeah. kind of like okay yeah. the game now is more like you know we do have a i love our fans they're really kind of keeping us going with like the merch we we're talking about maybe starting a patreon to kind of keep things yeah. going yeah we did sign a sync licensing deal last year with terra bird so that's going to help us a lot getting some you know i'm i'm a whenever it comes to that shit like as far as like oh are you selling out i'm like i don't fucking care use my music put it if it means musicians making money i don't care but i did make sure right. with the deal that we would be able to have last say like it's not going to be like surprise we're in a mcdonald's commercial you yeah, know yeah so that's a good thing but i'm like i musicians making money off of anything it's very hard to make money off of music so mm. I oh, absolutely. totally yeah yeah i just don't believe in that sellout shit or whatever i don't care no. like dude, until you do music and you realize how little money you make doing the you sign your sync license and deal too, and whatever. I mean that you know that that is such a, a kind of age old, out of date. I think so. Too. And actually, even then, when when that attitude came around, I mean, it was just it was just wrong anyway. It was just it was just ridiculous. Yeah, I know when things have moved on. Around? When you know, you know that that sort of attitude of, of yeah. you know not making money and selling out and that 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 kind of stuff i mean you know the 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 artists have basically sort of been mm -hmm. impoverished by the by the corporates you know we've seen that in yeah. the last sort of you know i don't know six months or so when with the, this thing around spotify and all the streaming services and how oh God, where the the, the flow of the money you know we've we've seen that you know it's not about selling out it's about you know kind of making a living and getting what's what what's what you're worth yeah that's what it's I mean, about if it helps fund uh well, the thing is, so far, it's been, like, submitting in songs that I like, you know, it's songs that I, or songs that are already been recorded, so it's, like, songs yeah. that I already fucking love, like, I don't think I could, I don't, Lars knows me, 
Van knows me really well that like, I'm not going to do anything I don't want to fucking do. Yeah. <laughs> I just won't do it. Like if I don't feel it, it even comes down to like, uh, this might've been like one of your questions later, but like creatively and stuff like that. But like, mm. I do feel like it's not something that I try to like wave over the band that like, oh, you have to write stuff that I like or blah, blah, blah. Or like we're writing together and shit like that. Yeah. But it is kind of like this unsaid thing that like, if I am not inspired to throw some dope shit on there, then yeah. that song probably isn't going to happen. It's not going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but it's just kind of like, I'm the lyricist and the song, you know, songwriting this shit. So it's just kind of like, I'm putting my personality out there. Mm. And a lot of like, I've definitely gotten a lot of shit kind of on my own, you mm. know, mm. as being like the face of the band or whatever. But I mean, I don't really care, but it's like, with those kind of things, it's just like, I don't know. Uh, I forgot my point now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a diva. Tell everyone. <laughs> Which is like, like kind of like go, going going I feel like that's what everyone thinks. I don't care. Going kind of back in back in time to where where this where this diva mind. I'm only kidding. Where yeah. where you know kind of where where your where your mindset sort of came came you know you know what are your sort of formative influences? How did how did your mindset you know kind of come about? How did it evolve? A pleasure band in the band or just like me? In you general? you you okay. you. Like a lot of people think I'm like fully formed when I came in or whatever. I'm just like mm. dude. I come from a Jamaican family. Yeah. I feel like that kind of sets me apart from like maybe American black families where it's just like they, we did listen to a lot of like reggae and, mm. raw and punk was introduced to me very young. You know, yeah. like yeah. my mom played everything from Zeppelin, the clash to Donna Summers to Motown. Like I always been yeah. like, to this day, I, I kind of fell into punk rock, but I like a lot of that shit. Like I mm. will listen to Stevie wonder all fucking day. Like, I don't know. Mm. Uh, I don't uh I was showing Thomas some of like Sam Cook and stuff because he, mm. he had a birthday or was it anniversary of death? Don't yeah, it's one of those, but it was pretty recent. And I was like, dude, have you listened to Sam Cook? Shit goes off. But I don't yeah. think people think I would like listen to that. But I'm like, I like good music. Like, yeah. if I think it's good, like I don't care about genres. I yeah. even sometimes have trouble with what genre pleasure venom fits in like I, totally. it's just like it I, is a punk band but i'm like i know that we do a little more than like your standard three chord punk band like it's a yeah lot of yeah fun. um and there are pop influences in there too way deep. yeah no <laughs> I, I i i totally agree i mean i, I it's, it's it's interesting i mean I, like when I, when I was a kid I, my i i well I, like up until kind of as a teenager I think I was like sort of pretty sort of closed minded in the sort of the mm. music that I that I liked. And I started listening to some radio shows and that kind of started to open my mind to, you know, to other other sort of styles of music, you know, kind of like sort of dub and sort of electronica and uh, and, you know, but I think that I, I really, really don't like, you know, kind of categorizing music. And I think, you you know, kind of. You know, because think I think it's it's just it's a bit lazy. It's easy to put a, a band or you know, that you know they're kind of punk. Yeah. You know, My but whole I think thing you, you, like I want to get out of the well, not like I don't want to get out of. It. I am a punk artist that is black, but it's like there's been so many lists of like black punk bands. I'm like, okay, at this point, I get it. Last year, George Floyd and everybody kind of started yeah. writing about black punk artists, yeah, and punk bands, and I get that. But like all the lists have been made at this point. I think it should be shifted. If you're gonna talk about black punk artists it should be like here's the best new black punk music you know because yeah, i'm like yeah. we already know i feel like people are just kind of regurgitating bands from other lists i don't think and to get like clout and i feel like they're kind of using yeah our band or other black artists to kind of be like look i'm woke and i'm like okay that would have been I know, woke like yeah. last year, but we've moved on from that like we need to kind of like i want to be i feel like we're a really good band outside of my blackness i think Absolutely. we're better than no, well, fuck it. I do think I'm better than a lot of fucking bands that are oh, like playing on the radio yeah. and shit right now. So I'm just kind of like, I feel like it kind of restricts us after a while, you know, where yeah. I'm just like, I think we're just a good, I want to be just on like band list, you know? <laughs> to totally. Yeah, totally. I, I, I completely, I mean, you, you, you got a lot, I, 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 there's a lot of different influences sort of and, and start musical styles, mm -hmm. you, you know, sort of coming into, coming into your sound, um, you know, which is, which is really kind of interesting, you know. It's kind of keeping the, the the sort of the energy and the the diversity of sound, and, and it's it's kind of 
when you when you're listening you don't know what to expect you don't know what's kind of coming next with mm-hmm. with, with your sound and i think that's that's kind of really exciting that comes across in i like your, a lot of bands shows. that kind of like sound like i don't know not like a mixtape but like uh just that are constantly kind of pushing their sound like i don't think we're uh there was like a whole thing where i thought the first ep was like we wanted to take it down because like we met yeah. we mixed and mastered that one ourselves like in a bedroom but i did like another podcast with a guy named johnny gowdy last year or goody mm. i'm sorry if i fucked up his last name but it was like <laughs> last year but he convinced me basically don't like people it's important for people to see that growth like this is where we started this is what we sound like just in a fucking room and i do like those songs and i think it's pretty good for diy as fuck like, yeah we did it in the studio we recorded it in a bedroom or bathroom. I think I did vocals yeah. in the bathroom for that record. And it is yeah. cool to go back and listen to that record. Like, dang, we did that. Yeah. With, like no money. <laughs> and then like, well, like, you know, learn that like we should probably get a producer and engineer and all that stuff. But like the records kind of slowly, but I mean, I, my whole thing is that I get bored really easily. I like mm-hmm. to, and I, it's because I listen to so many different sounds too. Like yeah. wherever I like different kinds of music. You know, fuck it. I even gotten down with like some Britney. I, I like pop. I don't I like I like all kinds of shit. Like, um, uh, I don't know. I just like to play around with sounds, and I just get bored. And I think that our our latest stuff is it, it does sound a lot more aggressive. But that's where I'm at. You know, that's where you're at right now. Yeah. Like, I we have a new single coming out sometime in April. We're nailing down a date pretty soon for that. But I shot a video for that one. Yeah. And that's mainly what I've been busy keeping up with. Like we've been editing that one out um yeah also had to shoot at distance and you know i was very about you know just literally the probably one of the smallest sets i've been on it was just like two camera guys who also doubled as lighting people and yeah, then my yeah. friend did help me as an assistant and then thomas was there helping and then i was like maybe the only unmasked person in front of the camera but i was still freaked yeah. out like this is a trip man like yeah but even that song it's like again like uh, it's just where i'm at like these I'm fucking pissed, you know, and I, I don't know. I have a lot to say. Uh, and, like and, even and, right now in America, there's like, like the stuff with that happened in Colorado and in Atlanta yeah. and like how these white men keep getting fucking mm-hmm. like, it's just a conversation that needs to be had. Like they keep shooting up places and they don't get shot. They get yeah. walked out, handcuffed. And it's very jarring to me as a black person whenever you've seen so many yeah. unarmed black people not Absolutely. get that treatment and they didn't yeah. shoot any shoot up and kill people yeah it's you know and then like I, I, have, I like all my asian american friends and stuff like they've been about as darn as we were last summer and i'm just like in solidarity i understand where y'all are at because it's very jarring to be like my skin color can get my ass killed yeah love america <laughs> we're just like everywhere but i'm like you think about moving other places and just like god everywhere is the same it seems like they're dealing with the same bullshit it's the same i mean it's the, it is it's it's it's, it's, a, it's the same kind of thing i guess the you know with america with the the gun laws is yeah you know when it happens it really happens yeah you know, it happens here the in AR-15 london you know stuff is what kills like i don't know if people have a problem like i'm a texan i'm in texas i i don't feel any way about guns on Honestly, I'm probably somewhere in the middle, like responsible gun owners or whatever. Are they necessary? Not really. Like, what the fuck? Can it be a hobby? Sure, if you're responsible. I don't understand why you need a machine gun, though. I'm sorry. Mm. Or, you know, semi-automatic. Like, Mm. who cares? Like, it still can kill a lot more people than if they had a handgun. And that's why the high casualties. Because you can just go in there go, you know, and take out way more people versus like, okay, if you snap in your cycle and you only have a handgun, maybe you'll get only one. You know, yeah. that's my issue where I'm just like, I don't think America's ready to have those conversations, you know, mm-hmm. but I'm going to talk about it in the music because I don't know. I, I do feel like I have like a confidence on, I feel like in my day to day, I'm a lot more like sunnier disposition, but I know it's because I get to kind of talk about it in the band. You know, I, 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 I get to let it out viciously or as with, like unedited as possible, you know? Yeah. It's so I mean, I mean, we we you like as a, as a as a kid, were you kind of encouraged to go into music, and also we encouraged to kind of sing about and write about kind of social, you know, the the you know the issues that mattered to you. Was that was that kind of like something that was encouraged? Well, I think my personality was always kind of like extroverted. You know, yeah. my mom know that I can't like she she's she would be like, 
you can tell like by the look on my face how I feel. I wear my heart on my sleeve. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Just, like you're gonna know how I fucking feel. So that's like mm. this is my personality. But I, my older brother, my middle brother Martin, he went to uh he's like four years older than me. So he, mm. I saw him in band like in middle school, just busy and doing a lot of cool shit and like yeah into Disney World and like I don't know band trips and stuff. And I just wanted mm. to get out of the house. I think it kept me out of a lot of trouble getting into band. I picked up the trumpet. That's where I kind of learned how to read and write and know theory and stuff like that. Like started at 11 years old and I did yeah. it all the way through high school and like did orchestra jazz. Like, I don't know, to me, that was really cool because I'm like, and even the marching band shit was kind of fun because the band that I went to, he's like a big, he worked mm. in the trumpet section pretty hard. Yeah. Shout out to Charlie Stevens, Walter High School. Cool. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> he rode my ass, but like, cool dude he really i think uh i feel like whenever i watch that movie whiplash it's a little bit like that like that dude didn't tell you you know that little <laughs> crack of the smile at the end that's what i got yeah. my senior year where it's like finally he thinks i'm a good musician he goes i think you're a really i'm probably paraphrasing but he said something like i think you're really serious and i think you'll go far because you are really serious about your shit mm. you know and I'm like okay finally but yeah. anyway like uh back in the day uh like he we were just he was a really big like trumpet work the trumpet section really hard mm. like we did a main at ferguson show like a really great trumpet player mm. we did an earth one and fire show so it's like i got to kind of play around and do like orchestra and symphonic and then do jazz band and you know play some main at ferguson and then like do marching yeah. band and play like pop hits or whatever yeah <laughs> and then yeah. we go in like we did all the competitions i did uil i did all that shit it kept me really busy yeah um, i think it gave me like a hard focus on like kind of how to do i was kind of I didn't even know it but I was kind of touring already yeah like, at a very young like 13 I went to Disney World for the first time and like mm. that's like it was a lot of like I respect these band directors because we were like little assholes <laughs> we were like <laughs> I remember me and my best friend at the time her name is Amber shout out Amber Knutson wherever you at girl <laughs> but we went you know the big white ball at Epcot yeah we were like we had this idea to go run under it and go scream we love big white balls <laughs> that was us okay like he took like 40 or 50 like i, I think it might have been like 40 of us rounding all these kids and it was even more kids in high school it was like 80 of us you know getting us all on a fucking you know bus and oh you know you have to make stops you have to get to certain places you have to unload and you yeah. have to get into the hotel and you have to be at a certain place and then like I think we did like jazz band and you have to change and do like orchestra stuff, you know, but yeah, like, yeah, yeah, it was kind of cool. The big white ball <laughs> was in the background. It was beautiful it was and on the water. It was beautiful. <laughs> and I did that again in high school. And like, I think we went to Atlanta, like we played quite a bit and like with the marching band stuff too, it was a little bit like touring. Like you have to have all make not forget stuff, you know, yeah. people hate, you forgot, like, I don't know, mouthpiece, whatever. It's just like a bad look. Like, don't do that. Make sure you have all your gear. Make sure you have all your uniform stuff set up. Yeah. It was like all supposed to look uniformed, you know? So it was very interesting. I never really thought about it like that, but I was like kind of doing a lot. You were kind of doing that. Out of yeah. A lot of trouble because I'm so extroverted. I get bored and really self-destructive, super fun. Um, anyway, <laughs> which is why I kind of <laughs> try to stay busy. <laughs> Just get bored and get in some shit. I don't even know, man. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, it helped a lot. Like that was kind of, God. If you, like if you, if you kind of get like you, you know with 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 your you, you know like like you say you know kind of getting bored with stuff do you so ha, like what happens with with kind of songwriting or kind of ideas do you just to kind of like go from the heart or is it, it is, that, is that how you write it's like kind of um, like a stream of consciousness and writing and kind of get stuff out there songwriting's really interesting it's just kind of like whenever you finish one you just kind of have to start again like you'd be like yeah. i'm so good at this but it's like are you because it's like now you're looking at another blank page and yeah. another track like you gotta write something else i do feel pretty good about like writing but i'm like i i do feel that uh it, it can sometimes songs will hit me and i have like a whole idea and i'll just be like singing mm. the riff and be like hey guys like this is what i got or it'll just be like maybe they'll come up with an idea and it inspires me to kind of like got you. Yeah. go in places in my brain like depending on how i felt like there was a time after Oh my God, it was after, uh, I forgot. Uh, there was so many Black Death last summer. I can't even remember yeah. which one. 
Mm. But anyway, I came into practice off of that, man. I almost canceled it because I was just like in a fucked up headspace. You know what I mean? Yeah. But like, yeah. Uh, I didn't even know that I needed to sing about it, you know? But that's what came out. And I was like, the song is kind of like tripping me out because it is about what's going on. Mm. I didn't know that was what I had to say, but it just kind of yeah. works out that way sometimes where mm. that's what you have to say and it comes out. And it's really... I don't know. I say a lot of a lot of shit is cathartic for me because it's just so off the cuff sometimes, you know. Yeah. Um, and it's just kind of trusting, you know, what I have to say. It, it needs to come out. And for me, if it scares me or it makes me nervous, I know that I'm in going in the right direction. <laughs> like, wow. there's sometimes yeah. I've written some shit and I'm like, dude, this is gonna get me. I just got to do it. You know, I feel like this is the direction. I don't. I, I don't want to play it safe. You know, lyrically you know it's, it's i mean i it, have to say it yeah i mean this is interesting because I, I think you, you know from from you know other other artists that i've spoken to that that, mm -hmm. that theme comes through a lot you know i think in like in kind of creative music you know the, the you know the thinking that if i know that it scares me if i know that i'm i'm kind of like okay i, I get that feeling mm -hmm. but i know well, i'm onto a good thing territory it's <laughs> to, scary. To, for people outside of that, outside of that, that thing, and maybe kind of like working regular jobs, that that is often a kind of like stops people from doing stuff. You know, it's like oh, I can't, I can't do that. You know, that kind yeah. of limits them. You know. Yeah, I mean, it kind of limited maybe the money that I could make because that's why I kind of was like well, do yeah. waiting tables because I mean, none mm -hmm. of those places really are gonna care. Like. I probably could have gotten more of like an admin assistant job, but like if I'm talking this shit mm. and they hear about it, I probably would be fired. You mm. know, yeah. <laughs> that's an interesting <laughs> conversation. People don't talk about that. I wonder if, I do wonder if it limits like what artists have to say, because a lot of us have to like work, you know, it's just, mm -hmm. the, I'm sorry, unless you were like fucking rich, I don't know how you're making money out here, especially in this climate, yeah. you know, like yeah. it's just, how are you making money? We're blessed to have like fans that buy merch you know, and like, it seems like they want to support us and make sure that we get on the other side of this. It's very cool. And I, I and I am so grateful, you know, like people don't even know like that little $20, $25 shirt does for us, you know, yeah, like yeah. that'll be the difference of us trying to book like a studio time. And like, we might be short 50 bucks and just like, dude, fans are amazing. Like, I think I saw someone buy a shirt today. It's just one shirt, but I'm like, I'm not doing anything. You just yeah. bought a shirt. Thank you so much. You've made um, something, and 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 that's it. You know, it's kind of got yeah. got an appeal, and that's 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 kind of good a good sort I of thing. I just feel like I, I don't know. I thought like I I don't know. Maybe that is something that limits some artists because I've had some frustrating conversations with people where it's like, oh, I wouldn't go political. I'm like, the fuck are you talking to me about this? Yeah. Like, I, I've had friends that be like, I can't believe people would even charge you up and ask you about that. Like, you, yeah, Audrey, who has no filter. Like, I'm gonna say whatever the fuck I want to say. And yeah, like, yeah, it's just like I've even had people on the project that have been like, maybe we shouldn't. They're like, how are you even going to ask her to like not talk about her black shit? Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, like my experience, and hopefully you're in the band because you support what I'm doing and trying to say. What are you trying to say? Yeah. Why I wanted to start the project in the first place is that I had been in a couple projects where they didn't leave the fucking garage. Like we couldn't even get to the show or mm. the recording aspect of it. And it was mainly, I felt like, cause I wasn't at the helm of it. You know, I felt like there were a lot of men kind of mm. telling me what to do, mm. you know, like you're the cute singer, do this and wear this. And I was like, I don't know. I, yeah. I just felt like if I'm at the helm of it, a lot of shit's gonna get done. Cause I, I do have like, from like middle school, high school, I do have that kind of go-getter kind of like very organized and like, yeah, I wanna get my shit done and this is how you do it. And there's yeah. no other yeah. way to really do it other than like you have to stay on schedule you have mm. to show up to practice weekly you mm. know you you have to be kind of strict on these things you can't be just like oh it's okay if we just like miss yet you know sorry that's yeah. not that's never going to be okay with me and if i look like a bitch because i'm a woman saying these things i don't care yeah yeah that's been a thing i've dealt with <laughs> where it's just like <laughs> i know people i was having a conversation with my with a friend of mine uh, he's our engineer, Elliot, from Ringo mm. Death Star. We were talking a little bit about this. He's like, I know someone in the scene that is for sure difficult, Audrey. And he mm. does not get as much shit as like, you know, like it, people admire it. They're like, oh, he's a 
badass you know he's just being like on his shit i'm like i'm doing the same fucking thing but i mean misogyny and racism microaggressions is not something that i'm looking forward to coming back to yeah Uh, yeah uh, and that's also a thing where i'm like okay shit's coming back a little sooner and i was thinking about that i'm like what exactly am i going back to did i even really like the old normal that much you know yeah because i did deal with a lot of shit like that but i I guess I was just used to it and just been moving so fast and we were playing a lot of shows and stuff. Yeah. You don't have the time to think about it, but now it's like, I feel like I'm about like preparing for battle. It, it I, does feel I, that way. I, I was going to, I was going to say, you know, comp- you know, how, how do you feel now and what, what sort of place were you in kind of like before, you know, I mean, basically kind of like when you finished touring the I UK honestly, and you, you, yeah. you know, compared to what that, that reflection time that you've had that, that year, where, where are you at now? I feel like I was a people pleaser at, at times. I do mm. feel like I was not taking care of my mental health. Mm. Uh, Cause I was just in the go, go, go mode. Uh, we yeah. had a band lineup, like change. And then we end up the first, oh my God, this is so crazy. The first show I train up a new lineup and stuff. And the first show that we have is a sold out show at Mohawk opening for against me. This yes, band is wacky. Course. Oh, yeah. it was amazing. But yeah. it was just kind of like, dude, who's, I was like, a normal band that is in Pledge Venom, if I'm debuting a new lineup, it would be like at a homeboy show, like at Cheer Up Charlie's or something like that. That's yeah. like, uh, you know, just like our friend, you know, like get our, but it's like this band is always like, it's very, it can be intense to be in this band because like we do get opportunities that are like, okay. And I'm like, want to do them all. Cause I yeah, yeah. like very much like, I love what I do. I love playing music. I love playing shows yeah. the way that I like doing it <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I, I feel like I wasn't in, in that same I didn't have time to kind of process the lineup change I didn't have like mm-hmm. these are my friends and stuff like that like people don't talk about these things but it was like it was very difficult for me to kind of yeah. like just kind of keep going and then everything kind of hard stop and I had time to kind of like think about how everything mm-hmm. kind of went down and stuff like that it was just kind of like I don't know it, it's I, I started seeing a therapist uh, mm. to kind of talk out a lot of these feelings that I have been having dealing mm. with like a lot of racist stuff that I didn't really even think was hurting me yeah. or misogynistic yeah. shit. You know, yeah. I've had a few people uh, even kind of slow down and apologize to me for their behavior in the past, which was a little trippy for me mm. because I was kind of like, are you doing this just because people, do you think I'm going to call you out? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like, I better get the apology in first. <laughs> And I, I mean, anybody that knows me knows that it's like not really my style. I have gotten to some public shit, but it's usually whatever people jump into my shit. Like yeah, I'm not yeah. going on your page talking shit, but I will defend myself. If you jump on my page, I will be like, bitch, mm. don't try it. I don't know why people try it to this mm. day. They, you know, but I mean, there's been people like they'll jump on like Twitter and talk shit or say, yeah. I don't know. No, it's never, they'll never at me though. Mm. you know it's just like vague and i'm like i know who you're talking about i know you're talking like, about but you're not I feel gonna say like it outright. My, I, I feel like my whole thing i've been talking to therapists a little bit about this that like my whole trip is that i'm a very direct person yeah you know i don't know how to navigate this world of covid where people are just online and existing on it it's very strange to me that's kind of like where i told you like i left facebook and stuff i'm like i don't really enjoy this shit anymore like yeah just, yeah very weird and it just feels like everyone's vague posting like who the fuck are y'all talking about like Uh, i am from houston texas like we run up and i really respect that like if you have a problem also i clap a lot and i think that scares a lot of white people here (laughs) (laughs) where it's just like if you get if you try it i will clap at you like you know like don't try it and i think it's like oh she's so aggressive and scary i'm like am i are you just being microaggressive you know like oh or uh, thomas calls it like he's like, people don't give you the same grace as Mm. like, say other people in the scene because they're like, soon as you're kind of, it's just confirmation bias. Like, oh, I knew that's how she is. And I'm like, dude, have you even talked to me? Like, I agree. Like most of my, what I get is that people mostly think that I'm sweet. (laughs) Like, I guess people see me on stage and I'm like, ah, or whatever, but it's like, I don't know. I, I, I get to let it out on stage. That's why I can be a chiller person off stage you know but i'm like as a black woman you already kind of handed this weird angry black woman trope and i wish people were more original than that shit come for me for anything else like i know 
you know that's gonna hurt me you saying yeah. that i'm aggressive or i'm mean and blah 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 or i'm Absolutely. scary whenever yeah. i don't perceive myself that way i think mm. i treat people with respect i think that i am very generous of my time especially yeah. if it's something that i love yeah you know i don't know it's just kind of like that's the kind of shit i've been thinking about since like what exactly environment and am i going back to so it does feel like i'm kind of preparing for like battle put on my Did you know, and, I already know what this shit is like, and I haven't had to navigate it in like a year. You know, yeah. so and I, how do you, I mean? Do you, do you feel do you feel more prepared? Oh, uh, somewhat. I probably feel like I need like a month or two. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then I'll, I just kind of tripped out. I'm like, oh my god, we're gonna be back sooner than later. At the same time, like we have our plans and stuff. I'm like, mm. I'm not in a big rush to go back to to that specifically. Whenever I don't think that music in general has really done much to like change their mm. racist misogynistic behavior mm, mm. like burger records got called out okay that's yeah. cool did it much change not really you know so i feel like yeah. i'm just going into the same shit and i'm not I really that the, okay with it i think this is the problem i mean it's just so institutionalized in in in, in so many ways you know I mean, yeah and then we talk about the unfair pay and like i'm gonna have to go back to negotiating my worth again we worked yeah. really hard to get the guarantees we were getting and just like dude i have to go I don't want to start from ground zero. I'd rather just like, I don't know. I, I feel like I'll know when the right time to come out and play. Yeah, uh, yeah. But now that it's becoming more of a reality, I'm still not going to rush myself because everybody else is doing it. I've always been that type too. My mother, my mother would say that, that like, I don't care if everybody's on the other side of the room, unless you give me a reason I'm going to be on. I have, I'm totally fine being on yeah. my own feeling the way that I feel. I don't yeah, need a bunch yeah. of people around me agreeing with me. I'm still going to feel how I feel and what happens over Which, the years. People kind of, oh, she was actually right. I'm like, I know. Yeah. You know, like whenever George Floyd and all the racists, you know, like, you know, people coming around and being like, acting like Black Lives Matter hasn't existed for years. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like since our first EP came out in like what? 2015, 2014, 2015. I don't remember. Yeah. But it's mm -hmm. like, I've been talking about this, the same content that everybody's losing their mind about last summer. Mm. I kind of had a jarred minute where I'm like, the fuck does this mean? Is this just like, oh, everybody's hopping on a fucking trend? I'm yeah. not okay with that, you know? Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and, um, like with, um, you, you, you know, I, th I think, uh, you, you know, there's, there's, there's just been like so much noise around, you know, like particularly, you know, kind of like sort of social media. You were talking a little bit about it earlier, you know, with, the, with, with, people maybe not sort of saying things outright but just you know mm. kind of saying things and sometimes it is kind of feels like it's okay there's a, there's a little bit of i'm trying to you know make put put the stake in the ground for me and kind of like you know show that i'm a little bit different and blah blah, blah and, and stuff like that you you and pleasure van have always been like to me you know kind of quite kind of uncompromising in 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 what you what you do it, but basically like your your, your integrity you do mm -hmm. what what works what works for you and you're not trying to necessarily or obviously sort of differentiate yourselves but you just but you're just doing what kind of comes from the heart yeah i mean i mean that that really kind of comes through in in your music and then obviously then in how you you know and how, how we're talking now yeah thank you i i, I don't know i just kind of I, I know me and i i literally won't budge on certain things <laughs> <laughs> it's just more like it's probably me where i'm just like no i won't do that yeah. <laughs> like there's like the whole tiktok thing that's happening and i'm just like i don't know how to navigate that like i feel like we have enough social medias i'm busy busy enough like yeah. okay i have to give out okay. more free content cool i don't get paid to even do the content that we're fucking doing right now you're supposed to be why do i want to yeah. do more like it's ridiculous i am a musician i want to mm write and play music and that's the main focus and i feel like a lot of artists get tripped up in the numbers game of it like you're not a better band than me because you have larger follower account we yeah. all know that you can buy it yeah i could easily get the or i think we're sitting on like 5k on instagram easily get us up to 10k if i just bought it yeah i don't want yeah. that i want fans and people that want to fucking be here and yeah. they engage and like I've kind of noticed like even our comment section is like always popping off like, like people want to talk to us and I'm like I fucking love that like to me yeah. that's greater I'd rather have our 200 300 likes and like you know 
talking to my people and are like be able to like dm me or whatever yeah. like black women specifically like give me so much life they're just like keep going keep doing what you're doing we need this i'm like dude you have no idea i almost want to get teary eyed everybody's gonna know i'm a sap now but like talking about it like it's why yeah. i wanted to do this to begin with because i saw like kind of a void like i want a band that i would have liked when i was growing up that i didn't yeah see. was it <laughs> was it thing happening with like pop punk resurgence and stuff too that i'm like god i oh i don't want to get in trouble <laughs> but i think i think i think when you when you do when you can do that when you can do that when you can kind of you, you know kind of like engage with people rather than just sort of take the passive likes and stuff like that which is what everybody fucking focuses it feels on like they're like. fighting for it you, i'm just like dude you, who cares you kind of keep it you once you kind of start to to engage and kind of talk then mm -hmm. you're going to get a more you're going to get a longer and better relationship with those people and that's whether you're a musician or whatever you're doing whatever part of your life you're talking about once you kind of you get that kind of connection you you can then start and that's what that's what you do you kind of when it, when I when I was talking before uh, you know the intro part is about that kind of connecting your experiences to the to your listeners to your crowd or to the or people you know if you're listening at home and that's what it that's what it's about yeah no it means it i don't know it's something it means a lot to me like anyone that supports us we all are, are a smaller band but it's just like i have a very big <laughs> i feel like we're also very big at the same time <laughs> like it's just like we're smaller but i'm like i feel like we'd make really big music like i don't mm -hmm. know i love it so much so yeah absolutely. Um, i wouldn't want to be i wouldn't and trade places with a lot of bands that have like bigger follow it i'm like i don't know it's just like their music doesn't really do much for me i feel like my music i don't know that it's just why i started the band i i want it to well, be more at the helm of like instead of people handing me music to write to i'm very involved in like the songwriting process from like, yeah. we're all in the room together writing together it's not like someone that's what it felt like before like I was auditioning for bands and they were handing me their music and telling me to write something to it and I had I felt like this weird disconnect that I had nothing to do with the actual music like yeah. I, I a lot of the jagged sounding stuff is because we produce it that way all together you know yeah. what I mean like so it's really it was, kind of it was like kind of like my brainchild where I was like I I feel like I'm really good at like I have a lot of ideas that's where I'm like I direct all our videos mostly and just like I have all these fucking ideas I'm a very I have a lot of ideas and I'm very good at executing them. Yeah. You know, so it's, so so it's kind of, it's that's kind of, what I felt like was the flaw with other projects that I was in. There was no execution and yeah. I'm a big follow through. Like I have an idea and I want to see it to completion. Yeah. And I feel like that's yeah. where like a lot of my, I don't know, uh, best involvement or whatever into the yeah. band. It, that's like, it's kind of like my little brainchild. Like I wanted to start a band that was like post-punk kind of aggressive yeah uh, i don't see a lot of girls growling on a mic that's what i want to fucking do you know so. so you get you get as much kind of like satisfaction and kind of energy from creating the you know the ideas through mm -hmm. to actually kind of executing it as well and yeah. kind of bring, bringing it to life no anybody that says i'm like fucking not i'm in the room fucking writing with everybody and producing yeah, yeah. fucking getting the track the way that i want it to be so that i can write to it yeah you know it's not like you know oh, okay you don't even have to come to this practice because we're just gonna like you know i i'm i'm in it i and anybody i am very vocal and it, it's not gonna happen if i don't like it. so uh, how 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 often do you do you kind of get frustrated with the creative with your creative process uh i don't really get okay i i've been blessed to work with some really fucking talented musicians i'm mm. rarely frustrated in the songwriting getting i get frustrated in the aspects of showing up mm like that shit anybody i'm a hard ass when it comes like oh you like it's not good if you miss a practice it's not good okay, if you so, can't yeah. make a show it's like you're not going to last very long in this band which is the reason why i started it too where it's like it's going to be like a train you can stay as yeah. long as you want because i've done too many i've done like a couple projects where you know the whole band was done because the guitars quit i'm like what is this this is mm. all my fucking work it's on the toilet mm. i wrote my fucking lyrics and melodies and shit I like them. I don't see the point of stopping because a bassist can't be here. You yeah, know, like that's yeah. not my style. Like it's yeah. I made it very clear and I make it very clear to anyone that joins the band that like you will be replaced if it's not working out and you can leave too and you will be replaced. And it's like a train is gonna keep going, you'll get credit for all your work. So in mm -hmm. that aspect, it's more like a project, you know, where it's just like I 
it's not so much a revolving door because I want every la- lineup to last forever, but it's just mm. kind of like, I'm totally okay if it doesn't, cause I'm going to keep going. And mm. I guess you're not going to stop me from doing what I want to do. Yeah. And there's been times where people have tried to like, and I'm like, what? Like you can quit, you can do whatever. It doesn't mean that the band is going to stop. And they're like mad at me. And I'm like, I told you I'm, I'm a follow through person. I told you what I was going to do. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like if I were a man, people would respect it, but it's just kind of like, Oh, uh, and it's just kind of difficult or a bitch. And I'm like, I don't think I am. I don't care. Like, whatever. Have, have you kind of, have you sort of seen your, um, or have you seen your fans, you know, kind of change as in the, you know, your fan base? Has it mm-hmm. changed either in kind of like demographics age or, you know, ethnicity? What, you know, what, what, what's kind of happened to, to your fan base as you've gone through the years? I've only seen them online right now. <laughs> it's been so long. I miss you guys. I haven't seen them in so fucking long, man. I did notice a, okay, so basically our fan base usually is like grown ass people, like who are mm. at least 21 and up, you know? But then yeah. like you have older cats that will come to the show and I'll, I'll be talking to them after the set because they're like, dude, this shit reminds me of like bikini kill sets that I went to or like, yeah. you know, I, I watched like birthday party and like that shit was guttural, dude. Like I was yeah. like, yes. People, I can't talk to the younger crowds about that because they don't even know who these bands are. Really. <laughs> They're just like, oh, that was a really fun show. But I'm like, I, I get just as much from like talking to older people that are into our music and stuff because they actually like a lot of the bands that I'm influenced by. Like, I'll talk about the fall with them. You know? Oh, wow. Like, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like shit that I like. And I'm like, I end up talking to this dude for like ever. And he's just like, he's old punk rock dude. He's awesome. You know, like, <laughs> and I, I don't know. We're getting down on music that I, I'm inspired by. So. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. It's, it's interesting that, that, that whole kind of, you know, kind of curiosity of, of, you know, different, you know, kind of music eras and, you know, kind of things like that, you know, very much like the fall, the birthday party, real kind of like, you know, kind of classic sort of like eighties, eighties stuff, very kind of discordant and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And um, I mean, I kind of noticed like, you know, you know, with like stuff that I've been going to watch in, in London, like, like the, um, there's, there's a real kind of mix of, of people now going to, you know, going to kind of go and watch films, especially kind of across, mm-hmm. I think across age groups. It's, yeah. it, it's, it's, it, it's kind of changed, you know, and, and I think there, you know, there are some bands from back in the day that, that were before the time, you know, mm-hmm. that they weren't really we understood. Might be at like that time. That, and I'm, a, I'm, I'm totally accepting of that. Like, yeah, definitely. I don't see how anyone joins music for monetary value. No, <laughs> it's a problem. <laughs> Like, we're never going to talk about it. You kind of touched on the Spotify shit. But I'm like, we're never going to talk about it. It's just kind yeah. of like, I feel like they bring it up so that they can feel like they did something and kind of sweep it back under the rug. Yeah, but, um, yeah. Kind of, uh, I don't know. It's just, uh, I, I feel, feel like maybe our band might be one of those things where it's just like, maybe we're a little ahead of our time. It's fine. Mm. Um, Like, there's people like, I don't know. Like, I've talked to like Shirley Manson and Garbage and stuff. She's just like, mm. I don't get it. Like, y'all are great and i'm like thanks that means yeah, a lot abs- coming from her absolutely you know? like, right that's, that's yeah. enough for me i'm just like you and me you really shut up or like uh <laughs> kathleen hannah loving our band or like loving our videos like shut the fuck up that's i can die yeah. now like, i mean that's I really awesome isn't anything it anything else like these are some of my heroes and i'm just like they actually respect what we do yeah fuck your follower account sorry <laughs> I, don't I mean that's, i mean i mean <laughs> you don't have that that's just crazy I mean that you know that 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 experience and that you know kind of validation is always there you know that that is there yeah. now and you know that's gonna that's gonna be awesome for you you, you know when you when you decide to play again yeah you know, I whatever mean that's kind of gonna be I feel like we were doing really well before like we've had a few yeah. points of like riding really close to the sun and things are like happening but then COVID or yeah yeah like, little shit would happen and I, I still feel like we were doing pretty well in 2020. So, mm. I mean, maybe we'll hit the ground running and everything will just kind of go on this incline, but I'm totally okay because I just feel like you can't be here for that reason alone. Mm. I'm here because I need to get a lot of shit off my chest. I have uh, a lot of, I don't know, depression and anxieties and music helps me kind of push yeah. through a lot of that. Um, I feel like I deal with a lot of my microaggressive behavior in this white ass town of Austin. Mm. So I fucking need this to kind of, you know, exercise these demons that i have they're like rather would rather than self-destruct you know what i mean 
which is not, an I'm, option. Always an option. Always an always on the <laughs> on the card. It's like okay, that's the that's that button there. We'll leave it for now, but it's still there. <laughs> I'm looking at it though, like ooh, you can do it though. <laughs> I mean, does that does does do, do, do those sort of experiences, you know, of like 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 of where you're living and you know, sort of what's been going on, you know, kind of almost like help you to kind of break through, or do, you know, or, or maybe not you, but also the rest of the band as well to kind of take those risks and say, "Fuck it," you know, we're, no, we're going to yeah. do this, we're going to do this, this because this is so important. Yeah, the worst thing so, people can tell me, a person like me, is no, I'm going to do it regardless. You're going like, to do it anyway. It gave me even bigger incentives, like, oh, I'm gonna show you motherfuckers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, like, I'm gonna show you. Don't the worst thing you can tell me is that I can't. Because I'm yeah. almost always like, I'm not gonna do anything I don't want to do. Tell me I can't do something. Okay. And we'll see what happens. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, try it. <laughs> I'm gonna do it, you know, or find a way around you and do it either way. But it's just kind of like it's mm. my project, and that's just kind of like why i get to be at the helm of it unfortunately and like i've been here from the beginning uh i've worked really hard to get us at a point where i feel more comfortable with like i feel like we're writing i mean i felt like that with the last cp but i do feel like we're writing like the best music and i feel like that's how i always want to feel when i'm writing or creating new music i want it to be i feel like there's a lot of weird competition in music where it's just like dude stop looking at me stop looking at other bands try and beat yourself i'm always just trying to beat the last song i wrote yeah like, yeah i know where i'm at and that's like a personal it, thing yeah. you know and I, I feel like a lot of artists get tripped up in the numbers they get mm. tripped up in competition competition they yeah get jealous they get weirdly passive aggressive also shit i'm not gonna miss going back to i feel like I, i'm gonna be more ambivert where i'm like i've always been like i need to go and recharge so i think i've always had yeah. it's just more like the life i was living i was just more extroverted but i always needed to recharge and like introvert it out I just feel like that's the main thing that's going to be like changed in me is that like instead of just being like hey everybody have a piece of me like not everybody deserves it yeah yeah you know so i'm like i'm gonna be pickier as fuck with the and, shit I, and i and yeah. I, th I, th I think you know having having somebody like you with with the really kind of strong self-belief you know for for, for people whose self-belief maybe isn't as, as strong surrounding yourself with people like you but no but no but it, but it gives you it give it, it 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 can encourage you know it can kind of like yeah. say well you know kind of believe in yourself believe you know stand up yeah. for what you believe in and and just go and go and do it i think it's it, it's it's really kind of powerful no and i work with artists here locally that i'm like they'll come to me and i'm like i didn't know what happened i'm like when did i become like the older cat in the scene but i guess we've been playing a while <laughs> like, like oh my god like, when did and this I happen fans are amazing you know but i'm like I love whenever people come to me and like, you know, out of that respect or that regard yeah. where it's just like, you do might have something I don't have, like, let me learn from you and like how you kind of navigate this world as a mm -hmm. person of color or just like a woman in punk rock. Mm -hmm. It means a lot versus like coming from like this jealous or blah, blah, blah. like, it's a very weird, mm -hmm. you know, thing. There was like a whole thing whenever people were like tripped out about John Mouse being a Republican or like mm -hmm. Ariel Pink. And I'm like, mm. I don't know, maybe because I play music, there's a lot of conservative motherfuckers. I live in Texas <laughs> too. I'm not surprised that any musicians are like, oh my God, those. And I'm like, I'm not surprised. I'm like, they may also, they're rich. I, I, I assume they're pretty comfortable. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. like, it's not very far off that they're like white and Republican, but I'm in the, I, I've talked to musicians that are fucking conservative. They yeah. just don't want people to know. Yeah. And I'm like, I've talked yeah. to you. And they've pissed me off. I'm like, how are you going to talk to my black ass about these things? Mm -hmm. You know, like, don't say that shit around me. You know, mm -hmm. like, it's really, and I'm like, you're basically have conservative ideals. You just don't want people to know because to you know. know it would ruin you. You're but I know, yeah. Yeah. you know, and I know who these musicians are where I'm like, you're yeah. not as open as people think that you are. Yeah. You know, I'm just not, I don't hang out with them anymore. I don't. Yeah. I don't want anything you do, to do with that. You don't need that sort of stuff around. It's like, okay, no. well, you're just going to disassociate, whatever, you know, however it's you do it. It's very much a scene of like people that are, and that's where I'm like, I have issues with like, I'm a very direct person. Like, if I feel something, like, you're not going to hear about it from anybody else but me. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. But also to me, it's like normalized sit downs because sitting down, like, there's so many times, like, 
the discourse online is so toxic and shit where it's like if you just sit down with say me and i encourage people because i'm like oh am i scary or whatever mm. to come and just talk to me because i swear to god whatever you feel is in your fucking head yeah you know or yeah. whatever you heard i didn't say it the way that it said it but i am yeah. a real i said it how i said it type but unless you hear it from me how the fuck are you gonna know yeah you know i don't know so <laughs> well I, I'm I'm really sad to say I think we've come to the come to the end order. It's been phenomenal, and I, I feel like I've kind of cut you off, kind of mid flow. But it, it, oh, it, you're good. I can I, do this it's, all day. It's been absolutely <laughs> phenomenal. It's been really fantastic to catch up with you. I, I, no, I can't, it's great I can't thank you, you enough. I really can't thank you enough. So, well, listen, take care. And I either, hope to either actually before just before COVID, we were going to come over to Austin. I think we were due to really? come in. We were due to get come in April. And we, obviously, we had to we had to kind of cancel it. So yeah. we, we're still going to come over, um, or we'll see you here in the UK whenever you come back here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm like, I can't wait to come back. And like, yeah. I don't know. It's just, I just want to go back on the road badly. Yeah, <laughs> it's so fun, <laughs> but I, I don't. I want to do it safely. You know, yeah, I don't want, for sure. My whole thing is like encouraging our fans to come out to shows whenever i i'm not sure like there's still people not vaccinated in the band you know what i mean so yeah, i'm like yeah, gotta yeah. have all that stuff i can't i won't feel comfortable inviting people to shows i don't know if they're vaccinated or not yeah, but yeah. maybe someone would take that risk because we haven't played in a long time and i yeah. would feel really bad if someone got sick especially with the vaccine being available like yeah, we're so sure. close like i can hold on a little longer i've kind of gotten <laughs> used to it now like i don't know i do i get to get, meet up with the band you know like once or wait, we do more like bi-weekly and we Zoom a lot. Yeah, uh, yeah. We've been with our manager, Lars, a lot, you know? Yeah. And like, so we've been in contact since all this started. A lot of like writing and passing tracks to each other, which is like, it's a slow burn that way whenever like, we can bust out songs fairly quickly whenever we're able to be in the fucking same room together. <laughs> you know, like I'm changing the whole way that we do our shit, yeah. it's crazy, you know? So <laughs> everyone just be patient with us. We- You'll be back out there. Happening, but like, and yeah, there'll be a new single dropping in April. I'm very brilliant. At least that, that was great doing the video because I'm like, I miss directing. I miss just like, I love my little films. They're they're fun and like, I, I can't talk about it. I just want, well, it's a very, I can't talk about it yet. <laughs> it's going to be soon. It'll be soon come. People yeah. just need to be paid. We'll be patient. Yeah, the March is almost over. So pretty soon, you guys. Pretty soon. Cool. Yeah. Brilliant. Thanks, Audrey. Really appreciate oh, it. Thank you. Really lovely to see you. Take care now. Bye. 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 Thanks for listening to the show, and I really hope that you enjoyed it and that you'll tune in for the next episode. In the meantime, it would be really awesome if you could rate and review the show and also share it with any friends who you think might enjoy it. 